Welcome everybody to another video of Ancient Greece Reloaded. Today we will talk about the ancient Aegea, next to Vergina, the tomb of King Philip II, Aka the father of Alexander the Great, and a little bit about Pompeii. And although we will mention historical facts, the current video will be more like a travel guide. Before we begin, if you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so as to stay tuned for upcoming videos. A quick disclaimer, although we were allowed to take pictures of everything inside the tombs, we will only show a small number of pictures so as to a. respect the people working there and b. because the tombs are worth visiting. By the way, visitors are allowed to take pictures. Those we will guide you through the main points of the tombs. Moreover, anyone who wants to explore the history of Alexander the Great, King Philip II, etc., this is one of the places that you must visit. Overall, Vergina is best known as the site of ancient Aegea, the first capital of Macedon. In 336 BC, King Philip II was assassinated in Aegea's theater and his son Alexander the Great was proclaimed king. In 1977, the burial sites of several kings of Macedon were uncovered, including the tomb of Philip II, which had not been disturbed or looted, unlike so many of the other tombs there. The ancient town was also the site of an extensive royal palace. The Archaeological Museum of Vergina was built to house all the artifacts found at the site and is one of the most important museums in Greece. If you ever are fortunate enough to visit the tomb of King Philip II, there are usually two ways to do it. One, via travel agency, hence you will go there with a group, or B, alone or with a couple of friends. In the second case, you will have to go there by car and most probably will be using a GPS system or map. If you are using Google Maps, be careful because until a few months ago, not sure about today, when you are about to reach the tombs in a radius of about 3 kilometers, Google Maps is completely inaccurate and you will be driving around in circles. In this case, the best thing you can do is whenever you meet a local person to ask for directions. Not only are they polite, but they are also very prideful about their historical inheritance and they will be more than delighted to give you directions for the tombs. So, once there, instead of actually seeing the tombs, you will be looking at a green hill and be wondering where on earth the tombs are. The answer, they are underground and here is how to get there. The moment you enter, walk towards the hill and go towards the left side of it. Eventually you will come across a passageway that will lead you directly underground and once inside, things become mind-blowing. The first things you will come across are, on the left side you will see something like marble grave steels, on the right side you will find pottery, jewelry, etc. that is roughly 2500 years old. Keep in mind that these items are of a more general nature that illustrate the art of that period, around that area of ancient Greece. The good thing is that there are small texts next to the items describing everything, hence you might not need a tour guide. As you make your way farther in, you walk to the left side, where the stairs are, so as to be able to circle around those tombs. In essence, you will find yourself above the original tombs and be looking at them from above, as seen in the pictures. The most notable aspect, apart from looking at the tombs from above, is the depiction of Hades abducting Persephone. Afterwards, as you continue the path ahead of you, you will reach a large hall with the findings of the tombs, especially the one of King Philip. And right there, everything becomes mind-blowing. The art, the weapons, the armors, the vases, the details on all of those items will just make you feel awestruck. And yes, you will be able to see King Philip's sword and armor as well. The most fascinating thing for me was the golden leaf crowns that I saw. Each golden leaf of the hundreds on each crown was worked on one by one. The time, effort and cost I guess for each crown must have been enormous. Moving on, on the left side of that hall, you will reach the entry for King Philip's tomb. As you walk down the stairs, you will be standing roughly 5 meters away from the actual tomb. Think about it this way. You are standing on the spot in which roughly 2500 years ago, Alexander the Great, his mother Queen Olympia, Aristotle and all other big shots of that time were standing on. Crazy, right? Next, when you get back to the main hall, you will also see King Philip's main sword. At this point, I would also like to point out something else. The handle of the sword would fit best a person that is roughly 140 tall to 160 max. Why is that? Because in contrast to Hollywood and today's common belief, the people of the ancient civilizations were respectively short when compared to today's average standards. 
people started to grow taller when the living conditions started to improve steadily and constantly, which was during the Industrial Revolution which started around 1750. This is a fact that can be best observed when traveling to Pompeii. Pompeii was an ancient city that was virtually destroyed by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD. If you are able to go there, eventually you will come across tiles that have the male genitals on them. These tiles in essence acted as road signs that would lead the sailors, merchants or foreign travelers to the red light district. And once you reach that district, you will be able to observe that the rooms, especially the beds, could only fit people that were of a height around 110 meters to 140 meters. In other words, they were like hobbits. By the way, you guessed it, we love Lord of the Rings. Moving on. Finally, as you continue through the large hall, you will come across another tomb that is estimated to be the tomb of one of Alexander the Great's sons. Specifically, it is the tomb of Alexander IV. The main difference between this tomb and King Philip's tomb is that because these tombs were close to each other, when grave robbers were able to find Alexander's tomb, they assumed that there was nothing else left. So while the tomb of King Philip was left intact, the tomb of Alexander was partially vandalized. But even so, the stuff that was found in it was so enormous and in good shape that will leave you speechless. And before we close the video, we should also pay tribute to the person that was leading the excavation team and was able to find the tombs, the archaeologist and professor Manolis Andronikos. And according to him, when he realized that he was actually holding the bones of King Philip II in his hands, he felt like lightning had stricken him and almost passed out. Let us finish with the following saying. Bodies destitute of brains are statues in the marketplace. Every this. That being said, remember guys to hit the like button and to subscribe to our channel, it would help us a lot. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for upcoming videos.